This episode of Death Metal is sponsored by NordVPN and BetterHelp. Frieza, the Dread Emperor from Dragon Ball. And Megatron, the Decepticon Commander from Transformers. When these two dictators collide, the cosmos will tremble. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Deep in the bowels of outer space lies a monster so cruel, so callous, so evil, that the universe itself trembles at his approach. Behold, the mighty Lord Frieza. Oh, he's adorable with the horns and that flappy tail and the... Genocide? Oh, awesome. And he's laughing. Cool. Frieza's diminutive stature and faux gentility were intentionally deceptive and rooted in a surprising place. In response to the Japanese economic bubble at the time, Frieza's design was meant to evoke real estate speculators. Series mangaka Akira Toriyama has described such speculators as the worst sort of people. Yes, really. I guess you could say Frieza is more than meets the eye. Oh, wait, shit, that's later. Much is unknown about Frieza's alien race and heritage, only that he and his father were born as mutants with abnormally high power levels. Oh, like how the doc said, my blood alcohol level was 0.8 straight out the womb. Frieza was so crazy strong that unlike most Dragon Ball characters who transform to get stronger, Frieza transforms to get weaker. So he doesn't like accidentally nuke a planet. Only intentionally. With his father's empire and army at his beck and call, Frieza would cross the universe, conquering worlds one by one and selling them to the highest bidder, just like real estate speculators. And if anyone objected, he'd just kill them, their entire family, and everyone they ever knew, just like real estate speculators. While he usually lets his weird multicolored alien grunts do his dirty work for him, Frieza's not afraid to throw down himself, especially if some spiky-haired space monkeys start getting too uppity for their own good. Frieza's strength comes from his innate understanding and manipulation of his own ki, or life energy, which he can use to enhance his physicality or manifest into projectile attacks. Like his classic death beam, death bowl, death wave, death cannon, death saucers. Yeah, I'm, I'm sensing a theme here. Frieza can move mountains with his mind, fire laser beams from his eyes, create key force fields, and he even learned to sense the key of others through sheer observation alone. He's fast enough to keep up with Goku's key attacks, which, scaled to the key he absorbed for a spirit bomb against Kid Buu, could move across the universe in less than a minute. That would be over 17 quadrillion times the speed of light, and he's gotten even stronger and faster since then. You know you're a badass when you can stroll into Planet Vegeta, a planet filled with people whose only higher aspirations involve murder and hair gel, and talk shit like you own the place. And he got so paranoid about one of them getting strong enough to kick his ass that he blew up the friggin' planet. Considering Planet Vegeta has 10 times the gravity of Earth, this would mean it likely has 10 times the mass and 100 times the energy required to overcome its gravitational binding energy and destroy it. That's over 5.3 Yoda tons of TNT. And that was in his weakest form. Too bad he kind of missed a spot. Or several because a bunch of Saiyans survived to fight another day. Space genocide just ain't what it used to be. This would come back to bite him when he was finally forced to confront the Earthbound Saiyan Kakarot, and accidentally ended up being the reason he turned into the legendary Super Saiyan. Like the albino dildo he is, Frieza has survived being pounded by Broly for over an hour straight, crushed by Goku's spirit bomb, and then split in half consumed by an exploding planet and left to float in the vacuum of space. He can survive without the vast majority of his body, though unlike other Dragon Ball villains, he can't heal on his own. It didn't help him that much after he got his ass sent to hell, but because of that dragon in his balls, he was back at it again. And with just four months worth of training, the first time he'd ever trained in his entire life, Frieza was able to achieve a new transformation capable of surpassing the Super Saiyan. Golden Frieza. That's a level of laziness I aspire to, Wiz. DeviantArt Frieza here lets him keep up with Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Vegeta. A significantly weaker Super Saiyan God Goku 
could blow up the whole of Universe 7 in a punch clash with the God of Destruction, Beerus. And the shockwaves of their punches were able to reach the edges of existence in only a few seconds, over 270 quadrillion times the speed of light. And that is before so many years of power-ups and training between then and now. Totally crazy, but nothing compared to his newest and greatest form, a transformation capable of surpassing Goku's Ultra Instinct and Vegeta's Ultra Ego their peaks at this point. A transformation even stronger than Gas, who was wished to be the strongest in the universe. He literally said F you to the Dragon Balls. This is Black Frieza. The all-seeing Oracle Fish had prophesied the coming of the universe's strongest, and perhaps he was talking about Frieza all along. Come on, give us another prediction. Oh, Wiz, I think you're gonna die. No, for some godforsaken reason, he didn't use his newfound power to kill those pesky Saiyans. They were right there, you moron. In fact, he once committed the arch-villain's greatest sin and teamed up with them to save their universe and beat Jiren, a being comparable to the gods of destruction. Because no one's allowed to destroy the universe but him. And that's a promise he means to keep. This almighty emperor will continue to rule the universe with an iron grip and a heart of ice. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by NordVPN. It's no secret that Wi-Fi networks, especially free public ones, can be compromised by criminals to get access to, spy on, or even alter your data. For example, you want to surf the web at your local cafe, but the network you sign into happens to be a fake one set up to harvest any sensitive data you enter. The solution? Encrypt your online traffic with NordVPN at all times to keep their naughty fingers out of it. NordVPN is easy to use. You can connect with one click or enable auto-connect for zero-click protection. It's got 5,800 servers in 60 countries and has been confirmed by speed tests to be the fastest VPN out there. Since NordVPN encrypts all traffic, your internet service provider can't slow down your streaming speed. NordVPN is on every major platform, Windows, Android, iOS, macOS, and Linux. And users can get a huge discount with the purchase of a two-month plan with four months free. Try it risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring our show. You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Or you live even longer and become an 80s toy commercial. This is Megatron. In Cybertron's ancient past, the planet was ruled by the Functionist Religious Order, which decreed a Transformer's natural-born alternate mode determined their role and status in society rather than letting them choose for themselves. Born into this repressive caste system, Megatron of Tarn dreamed of something more. So this giant Hasbro toy robot, only $5.99 at your nearest Rite Aid, wrote a manifesto on peaceful dissent that got popular with the oppressed Cybertronian working class. So much so, in fact, that the Senate tried to have him assassinated. Whoa, politics alert! After surviving that brush with death, Megatron was convinced that peace could never be an option. The only path left to overthrow the crippling social order was violent revolution. So were the Autobots originally the bad guys here? Optimus Prime? More like Optimus Crime. Never say that Megatron wasn't committed. The civil war he started between the two groups lasted nine million fucking years. And again, remember, toy robots. He was aided in his war efforts by his immensely powerful fusion cannon a giant laser bazooka that can hit targets from 12 miles away and level a small town in a single shot. These projectiles are so fast, they're able to exit the atmosphere from ground level after only a single second. By scaling the distance of the Earth using the angle of this shot, the fusion cannon's projectile must be moving over 4,200 times the speed of sound. But like me, the fusion cannon needs a little time to recharge between shots. So Megatron's got some tools to keep the job going. He can close the distance with his Energon mace and block blows with his Energon shield. It helps that Meg's literally fought as a gladiator before his stunt as a revolutionary. Megatron can fire lasers from his eyes and arms, launch buzzsaws strong enough to slice through solid rock, fly through the air, and open up a force field known as a panic bubble. Now it might seem like a huge flaw that it lets enemy combatants inside, but that's only until you realize it won't let them back out again. That's when the panic part comes in. Megatron's not trapped in there with you. 
You're trapped in there with him. Megatron's Cybertronian body is strong enough to match the Autobot leader Optimus Prime, who can toss around oil tankers weighing hundreds of thousands of tons. And Megatron's metallic hide was tough enough to survive an explosion so massive it launched the entire planet of Cybertron through space. By taking a look at Cybertron's mass and how fast it was sent flying to get its overall kinetic energy, Megatron must have survived a blast equal to nearly 4.5 Nina tons of TNT, enough to annihilate a small star. He can even keep up with Decepticons like Starscream, who can fly across the galaxy from Earth to Cybertron at hundreds of thousands of times the speed of light. And he wouldn't be a Transformer without being able to transform into various vehicles. A tank, a stealth bomber jet, a and a gun! Just a gun. Walter B-38, in fact. I'm sorry, Wiz. I know he's this tragic revolutionary corrupted by the cycle of violence or whatever, but that is the funniest shit I have ever seen. What does he have, like his deceptive buddies point him at people and fire? Sometimes. He can fire himself, too. <laughs> oh my god. That looks even sillier. You may be laughing, but Megatron is no joke. By utilizing space bridge teleportation technology, Megatron can establish a remote link up to a nearby black hole and teleport the antimatter it produces to his location. Through his eyeballs! Should matter and antimatter meet, they will be mutually annihilated in a brilliant release of energy defined by E equals MC squared. It doesn't matter how durable the matter is, it will be destroyed at the subatomic level. As Megatron's war for control of Cybertron dragged on, all of his highfalutin ideals started to fall to the wayside. In essence, there used to be a point to the war. Now, war was the point. His only goal left was to rule Cybertron with a literal iron fist. That's where Megatron's greatest weapon came into play, his mind. The dude is a strategic and tactical genius who's always thinking 10 steps ahead. He's fought powerful Transformers like Grimlock, Predaking, and the Decepticon, a being with the power of an entire evil universe behind it. He and Optimus have even fought Nova Prime and Regenesis Shockwave, both of whom could utilize the energy of that same universe. Megatron once sealed himself inside an Omniglobe and commanded a thousand real-life battles at once funneling every iota of relevant information into his brain at the same time. The sheer deluge of data would be incomprehensible for anyone without that supercomputer brain. But all that robot ass kicking ended up as a draw, and the only true loser was Cybertron. With the planet in ruins and its civilization extinguished, the Cybertronian golden age was long over, and the vanguard of its destruction was Megatron who's now a crusty Saturday morning cartoon villain with a voice that sounds like he smokes 40 packs a day and a hate boner for his boneheaded second-in-command, Starscream. After countless millennia of a humiliating stalemate with his Boy Scout rival, Megatron's brilliant mind finally turned inward. He remembered that his early writings advocated for peaceful conversion and free thought instead of domination. It took you nine million years to remember why you started fighting in the first place? Would that memory get lost in the cloud? In what was possibly his most surprising tactical move yet, Megatron saved the universe from annihilation as an Autobot. What? He realized that after millions of years of indefinite war, the ideals that he fought for, freedom, justice, equality, had switched sides and Megatron had to as well. Turns out there was more to this supervillain than met the eye, because true to his nature, Megatron transformed. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by BetterHelp. Have you ever felt like your very own brain is getting in your way? And I'm not just talking about maniacal super geniuses like myself, this can apply to anyone. That feeling where you know what you should be doing, but you just can't do it and you don't know why. Therapy can help you find out what's holding you back, whether it be anxiety, self-doubt, or anything. Your brain should be working for you, not against you. Talking to someone about your feelings can definitely be tough, but it's definitely worth it. It's definitely not just for people dealing with major trauma, therapy can benefit fit you at any point in your life. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, consider giving BetterHelp a try. What's great about it too is that it's entirely online. That's right, no long commutes to a therapist's office. You can have a session right from the comfort of your own home. All you have to do to start is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with the right licensed therapist for you. And in case you aren't quite connecting, you can switch therapists anytime for no extra charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash DeathBattle today to get 10% off your first month. <laughs>
All right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a death battle! Greetings, noble warrior of planet Cyber Whatever. I, Lord Freezer, claim this world as my own. Cheer for me or face annihilation. I have fought for my planet for eons. I would rather see it turn to ash than reside in your filthy hands, organic scum. <laughs> I love it when they monologue back. <laughs> I'll have to construct a new mothership from your corpse. What's wrong? Is that clunky robot body too slow to keep up? My wish should more than suffice, you blithering punks. This just always happen. I give it three, no, five minutes. My planet! Uh? <laughs> Behold the mighty Lord Freezer, ruler of a dying planet. My planet! Where is your army? Where is your ship? So powerful, and yet you will wander the depths of space for eternity, all because of me! What a fool! You despicable cretinous worm! I'll torture you until your screams can be heard in the vacuum of space! Die a fool's death! <sighs> <laughs> you will die by my hand! You fool! It was actually one minute and ten seconds. 
idiot. Megatron's ruthless resilience may have netted him a win in some scenarios, but Frieza's overwhelming power gave him a clear edge. Megatron's ace in the hole was his antimatter, which would have annihilated Frieza's ass no matter how tough it was. And that was a real possibility. Megatron is a master tactician and manipulator with millions of years of combat experience. Frieza, on the other hand, has always relied on his raw power and intimidation to win fights. When things don't go his way, he has a tendency to freak out. However, Frieza has survived getting most of his body obliterated and kept going. Which meant the antimatter wasn't a surefire win. It would have to completely cover Frieza's whole body before he could react. And Frieza was way too fast for that. While Megatron scaled to characters who could cross galaxies, Frieza has kept up with Goku, who should be at least trillions of times faster. And on his smaller size and key force fields, Frieza had more than enough ways to avoid, defend, or survive the antimatter. So Megatron's only option was power. While Megatron has survived planet-busting explosions, and even fought with a being that had the energy of a universe behind it, Golden Frieza was just too much for him, considering he certainly surpassed Goku and Beerus' punch clash. Since Universe 7 as a whole should be over 13 times larger than our own universe, Frieza's superforms would far exceed Megatron's own power. And that feat happened at the beginning of Dragon Ball Super. Goku has gotten league stronger since then, and Black Frieza is currently beyond him. There was just no way Megatron was strong enough to keep up. Megatron was a devious foe, but Frieza's power, speed, and sheer survivability allowed him to crush the Decepticon leader underfoot. I guess you could say Megatron was cool, but Frieza was cooler. The winner is Frieza. Thanks for watching, and hey, are you a Death Battle member? We've got a ballot going on right now where members get to choose a matchup for the next season. So click that join button and jump into our Champions Discord.